this is all a journey and sometimes I think it's important to show more of the details involved in making this journey possible. I'll start with the steps that I usually do for a project like this, and that is to completely clean the dresser with a degreaser, and I'm using crud cutter this time. I'll also remove the hardware and start cleaning those pieces as well. As you saw, I purchased this at a local Goodwill for $30. The manager said it had only been on the floor for about 30 minutes, so I was excited to get this piece. I don't usually choose a style like this. The Whittacone name I've never heard of. It's been around for a long time. The top here is three panels of oak veneer and I could tell right away that the overall build quality on this one was exceptional and I'm excited to dive into this project. I've shown the detailed process of cleaning the hardware in previous videos and it's no different here. I'm just using a one to one ratio of water and vinegar, bringing it to a boil and then I'll let the hardware sit in here for about five, 10 minutes, sometimes a little bit longer. And thanks to some input from a viewer, I realized that a lot of what's coming off of here is not just dirt and oil, but rather a lacquer that was covered over the hardware at the time this dresser was made. And I would imagine in 20 or 30 years, your grandkids may be doing the same process, removing all of that gilding wax from hardware. I'll be removing the old finish with Clean Strip Premium Stripper, the 15 minute version, and I'm just applying generously with a chip brush. It's a love-hate relationship with these drawers. I'm loving all the details in the craftsmanship, but this will require a lot of prep work later in the video. 
I come back and add mineral spirits just before I'm ready to scrape. This makes the scraping process a little easier. And I'm just using a plastic spatula here. I would have liked for more of the old finishes to come off on the drawers. I probably should have left the clean strip on a little longer. And I've also seen people cover these with saran wrap or plastic bags. Back to the hardware, these have boiled for about 10 or 15 minutes. As mentioned before, I don't think this is all dirt and oil. I believe these were covered in a lacquer. The nice part about it is just coming through with a non-abrasive brush and brushing that right off. The final step will be applying Barkeeper's Friend and polishing these pieces with a damp cloth. If these had been plated, I would have painted them. I'm not too crazy about wiping the excess stripper off with mineral spirits and steel wool. For me, it's easier just to scrape it off once everything has dried using the carbide scraper. I won't do the entire surface here, but I am removing the excess stripper that I can find. I had no idea when I purchased this carbide scraper set that I would use it this much, but it was perfect for this project. I wouldn't say that this dresser was dated, but I wasn't a fan of the dark finishes over so much of the beautiful wood grain. And I feel like it concealed some of the craftsmanship in the entire piece. So my plan is to add lighter finishes. And unfortunately to do that, everything on these edges has to be perfect. So this is time consuming, it is enjoyable, but by the time I got to the third dresser drawer, I was ready to be done with this step. I've allowed most of the excess stripper and old finish to completely dry, so I'm ready to go through and sand. You saw me go through some of the major areas with the carbide scraper as well. I'll be using 150 grit sandpaper with the orbital sander. You've seen this process several times in other videos, so I won't get too detailed regarding that process. I did want to mention I added some exciting news over on my Instagram page, so I'll link that below. Feel free to check it out. Another thing, I did receive a message yesterday from a local organization asking me to donate several apparel items from my Etsy shop towards an upcoming charity. And that'll be at the end of September here. The charity will be to help serve underprivileged youth in our community, so I'm excited about that. I thought it might be fun to try and finish a furniture project for that auction as well. So in preparation, I've listed an Amazon wish list in the description with several products I'll be using towards that project. So if you'd like to help support the cause, feel free to check that out in the description as well. Let's start sanding.
I'm continuing to learn how to properly identify different wood types used to build furniture pieces like this. I believe the drawer fronts are solid oak and the other parts of the drawers maple. As I sand everything back, I begin to find several imperfections in this wood, several black dots which appear to be paint with the final product. But I didn't want to conceal any of this. I'm just going to highlight these imperfections and accept the fact that this is just the way natural wood looks. Here I'm prepping the base with 150 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander. This step is possibly controversial, but my intention is to paint the base to highlight the craftsmanship in the drawers and the veneer top. So that is the plan. Finally done with all the prep work. I'm gonna start with the finishes at this point. And at this stage, I'm usually making decisions regarding what finishes to use. So I have the dresser turned around intentionally. I feel like it's a little too revealing at this point what the direction we're going with this is. So figured out this is likely, to the best of my knowledge, three panels of oak veneer for the top. And I want to highlight some of the craftsmanship on this. So I'm going to be using a water-based gloss top coat poly from General Finishes. And I'm going to do that also on the drawers. The drawers, I believe, are solid oak drawer fronts. And then other things like on the back here, a couple of stickers. I like to leave those in some cases because it tells some of the story of this furniture piece. It was likely from an auction at some point, probably just before it was donated to Goodwill, to be honest. So I like to leave some of those things to tell some of the story for these pieces. I don't know how this is going to look. There are some imperfections in the wood itself. That's just natural wood. So no matter how hard you work at it, it's not gonna come out completely. I see a few lines has nothing to do with the sanding. It's just lines consistent right across with the way that the, the veneer is laid out. So I like to highlight some of those imperfections. It's just the way it is and you do the best you can with stuff like that. So I've stirred this water-based poly and the recommendations were to use a foam brush to apply it. So I'm just gonna do a nice light first coat with the foam brush. I may come back between coats. I'm expecting to do about three coats. I may come back and do light sanding in between. We'll see if that's even necessary. But hopefully as this dries, it's gonna keep this wood look nice and light. If you saw my last video, I had several different top coats that turned this top orange and also yellow. So I'm trying to avoid that in this case. I started painting this piece and I knew immediately that this was the wrong color for this project. I did want to try this color, Fusion Mineral Paints, and this is Cranberry. I was hoping it would darken as it dried, but truthfully, it just made this project look much cheaper than it actually was. So as I paint everything black in a moment, you'll see me covering over a Cranberry color. That's what this is. Is painting this piece going to be controversial. I suspect that it will be, but I spent hours sanding some of the wood here on the front and the drawer fronts as well, trying to showcase some of the natural beauty there. So I kept it natural and the rest of it I'm going to paint here. Paint's very easy to remove relative to other parts of the project. So if I don't like it, I'll remove it or change the color. You may notice several small dots on the far left of this furniture piece. Those aren't paint marks, those are some of the imperfections I was referring to in the natural wood. So I'll just continue to highlight those areas. I like to use a painter's brush in this case versus painter's tape. With a lot of these details using painter's tape, there are areas where paint can seep underneath and you won't discover until you remove the tape. This is just water-based, so as I make mistakes, I can easily wipe off any of the excess paint. 
This is a good shot of the back side of the dresser. If you're looking at furniture in the thrift stores or anywhere, this helps identify whether a piece has a top veneer. So and in this case, you can see the thin layer of veneer on the top here. Thankfully, this dresser did not need any major repairs, but as part of the final preparation, I like to add some kind of wax to the drawer slides. So that's what I'm doing here, and then I'll allow them to completely dry before I use them. The last step before I put the hardware back on, my new favorite, Howard Feed & Wax Wood Polish & Conditioner. I'm using a non-abrasive pad to apply it. I have three coats of water-based poly on here already. This Howard Feed & Wax just takes it one step farther. I'm applying in a swirling motion over the entire surface. I'll come back in about 20 minutes and wipe all of the excess off in the direction of the wood grain. As I'm working on a project, my mind is flooded with ideas of how to stage a furniture piece appropriately. And in this case, I came out to prep for staging the morning of and the sun was shining through the garage door window and I thought there was no better way to showcase some of the natural wood grain than to use that natural light. <laughs> 